Hello and a very warm welcome to The Sweet Spot, brought to you by The Racing Post in association with AK Betts, your weekly supplement of golf betting advice. On the punter's bag once again is Steve Palmer, the inform Steve Palmer. Boyd, the pecker is up. We're among the winners. <laughs> yeah, the pecker is up. It was another dramatic weekday, wasn't it? Uh, I actually fell asleep last night in a uh, during an MRI scan. Uh, the, the nurses said it was the first time they'd ever have someone fall asleep, like a 20 minute thing. You go in the in the chamber there. And there's lots of noises, but I was so knackered. Um, I had the, the head, the little um, earplugs in. And I fell asleep. Uh, so when I came out, they had to wake me up. Um, so I think that shows you know, what we've been through. You know, it wasn't just the golf. The football was exhausting. Um, much to discuss. Are, are you all right, Steve? MRI scans? You, you're all good? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, that is uh, arthritis related. You know, I've got right. cirrhotic arthritis in the toes. They're a bit concerned about the spine. So it was an MRI on the spine. Um, it was a very amusing experience from start to finish, actually, because um, uh, do, do you want to know? <laughs> it, was a, it was a very funny moment where you go in there. They ask you this long list of questions uh, and the nurse is just so many questions with the answer was no. So she's got a clipboard and it's all about what's inside you because you can't have a scan and, and, and unless um, they know that there's nothing that's going to cause problems with the scan. So it's all like, oh, yeah, pacemaker. No, like, yeah, have you ever had glass lodged inside you? No. Any metal inside you? No. So I was getting bored. Is it going on? No, 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 no. And then it got to a question, which at the time I didn't know it was this question, but the question was, um, were you born a male? And uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just like switched off and thought she said nail. So then I started looking at my my nails and I was, I was, I was going, no, no, no. Um, so I thought she meant like in growing nail or something. So then, so then she's going, oh, right. Okay. Well, when, when was, when was the operation? Blah. And I just need to know if, if pre- I can rule out pregnancy. And I was just like, <laughs> it, it just went bananas from there. So um, yeah, yeah. Concentrate. If you have a scan, concentrate. One of the questions will be, are you, were you born a male? And it's got nothing to do with nails. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, okay. I'm glad to hear that you're, you're all good though, Steve. And yeah, the, the other question that she should have asked you is, is it coming home? Is it coming home? Yeah, she should have asked me that because um, that is definitely a, a yes, isn't it? Yeah, all the no's could have been contrasted with a yes. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think we're definitely going to get to the final. I'm so relieved Luke Shaw is back. Uh, we, yeah, we've got minutes under Luke Shaw's belt. Surely he starts the semi-final, you know, creating an amazing balance in a team that's been lacking balance. So, yeah, I think we're going to get past the Netherlands. I'm a bit concerned about the quality of the opposition in the finals. I'm sure you are, though. Yeah, we'll be the outsiders. I would have thought for the final. Yeah, yeah, but anything can happen. Anything can happen in the final. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, maybe we're in the final on penalties, but um, yeah, I'm really confident we're going to beat the Netherlands. Now, if if we do get to the final, Sunday is going to be mental because as we're going to get to, there are, four, is it four tournaments to get through this week? So we yeah. could be juggling four golf tournaments. The the build up to the Euros, it's all going to be happening on Sunday. It is. And then you've got the Open Championship the following week. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we need to. Um, it's a good job I had that 20 minute nap in the MRI scan because we got a lot, a lot ahead of us. Right. We'll get to what's coming up as well as looking back on last week's action, including Steve's tip. But first, a reminder of the fantastic welcome offer that AK Bets, our sponsor, are providing for you. Place your first bet, AK Bets account, uh, on any golf market. And you'll get 50% of your stake back as a free bet up to £25. Terms and conditions apply. Remember the code there, Sweet Spot 25. Sweet Spot 25 when opening an account. Right, we will go to the BMW International Open first with our reviews here, Steve. Ewan Ferguson um, was gettable, showed up well in, in Italy. Um, I think he was as big as 40s, 45s. Um, so he, he was one that could be found. Uh, and he cruised yeah. home. Well, he was a sweet spot regular at the start of the year. There was a time this season where we were tipping you and Ferguson and Tom McKibben seemingly every week. Uh, your predecessor, Jack Reeve, you know, famously said he woke up in the middle of the night and he was having visions of you and Ferguson and Tom McKibben because they were so ingrained on his brain. Um, but we stopped back in you and Ferguson. Um, he was having some issues with vertigo, Dave. He, uh, a, a month ago, he withdrew from the European Open um, with vertigo. He retired during that. That, that event in Germany. And then he made his return to Germany last week and there was no vertigo and he, you know, he showed his quality. So, yeah, it sounds like he's not entirely cured of this, this vertigo day. So be careful backing him going forward. It seems like it just comes and goes. So on the days he's fit, he's effective. On the days he's not, um, you know, he, he's going to struggle. There's a few golfers affected by that. One or two. We've had people collapse in bunkers and all sorts down the years. 
Yeah, Jason Day famously had it, didn't he, for for a long time. Uh, he seems to have got it under control now. So hopefully, hopefully Ferguson can can find a solution too, because um, yeah, quality player, and um, yeah, I was pleased for him. It was a very emotional victory. That's his third DP World Tour title. Um, yeah, 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 a player we've always liked. Right, he won by two shots. What about some of those in behind who caught the eye? Well, I think we've got to discuss Thomas Peters because it was your classic roller coaster ride for for Thomas Peters backers. Uh, he finished ninth, only six shots behind, having made a calamitous double bogey in round one, a double bogey in round two with a wedge in his hand from the fairway for a second shot. He bogeyed two par fives in round three. He made four bogeys in round four <laughs> and then still only lost by six shots. Yeah, some horrific course management errors mixed in with some amazing golf. Two eagles, 20 birdies, and he finished 12 under par. So, yeah, I, 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 it was comical in many ways. Uh, you Can you stick laugh, him in the bin, Steve? Can you stick Peters in the bin? No, he's not love going him. in the bin. No, you love him. <laughs> not going in the bin. He's so gifted. He reacted to one of the, the... He made an absolute horlick to one of the holes. And then the next hole just drove the par four. You know, he got enormous power and made a... You know, yeah, he makes mincemeats of, of short par fours when he's in when he's angry. Uh, no, no, I, I, it, it's OK. Thomas Peters is still on still on the radar. It was, it was a fun ride, but ultimately disappointing. OK, well, uh, listen, do remember to, to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know how you're getting on. You're back in, Steve. Loads of people, and I'll get to them, flagging up. Good stuff for the winner this week. Uh, but I do want to go back to Nick Lavette's comment four days ago, and he simply says, Peters is a petulant child. So I think <laughs> he's stuck Peters in the bin, but you're going to keep the faith. Well, it's amazing that he finished so close to the lead after you know, a couple of card-busting holes. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I can't put him in the bin. I can't put him in the bin, Dave. Sorry. What about some of the other lads in behind some youngsters on show? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think Jordan Smith again would be disappointed with them. Um, yeah, never seems to have those gears in contention, does he? You know, Jordan Smith, one of the best ball strikers on the tour, but um, yeah, you, you, you worry about him when he gets into contention. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I won't be going. Uh, I won't be going near Jordan Smith in future. And the result was sort of on the right. It was on the ball a long way out, wasn't it, in the uh, in that competition? He just had to par his way home. But, you know, yeah, he, he was very emotional afterwards, Ferguson. He said he couldn't believe it was happening. You know, he obviously felt that this vertigo was going to um, give him problems um, going forward. And um, he, he surprised himself by winning. So, yeah, pleased for the lad. Good stuff. Right. Now then, let's get on to Davis Thompson winning the John Deere Classic at 25 to 1, as posted and put up on this show last week. There was a lovely cut. I know you do the spotlights for, for each player in the Racing Post as well. And his comment read, tour breakthrough appears imminent. And bang, there it is. Absolutely. What a player. What a player. I mean, sometimes you just got to show uh, a bit of patience with these players. You know, just show a little patience as, as Take That Once Sang. I don't know whether you're too young for, for Take That. That's one of my, one of my favourite songs. But when you get a youngster who... You know, comes onto the scene who's clearly all class. Keep backing them; that they'll reward you eventually. I mean, Thompson's taken a, a little bit longer than I expected to to get that first win, but I think it's floodgates time now, Dave. Um, you know, he's world class, superb as an amateur. Now can take the world by storm at the age of 25. That ninth place in the U.S. Open the other day, yeah, you know, that was a huge hint that he's gone up a level. So, uh, yeah, keep him on your side. You know, he's 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 he's, he's going places this lap. Yeah, he's 62 on Saturday. It was incredible. Absolutely. And then, yeah, with the lead on Sunday, just holding everything he looked at. I mean, you know, you, you expect a, a sort of nervous ride from, yeah. from two shots ahead with on a low-scoring golf course. And he was rolling his rock with, you know, end over end, as they say. You know, they, it was so pure, like a short backswing. But you could see, you see the quality of the putts from the way the ball, you know, the top spin on the ball. Um, so, yeah, really impressive front-running performance. Uh, again, a lot of emotion afterwards. Lady wife came onto the green. Yeah, uh, love all that. That gushy stuff. So proud of you. Love all that. <laughs> well, I mean, he seems, yeah, he's got a touch of the Scottish Shefflers about him in terms of, you yeah. know, um, you yeah, know, likes to welcome the wife onto the green and um, let it all out there. So, because uh, he's a very serious character, uh, David's Tom. You don't get many smiles out of him, Dave. Um, you know, he's a bit like you. We have to work hard to get a smile out of you. Yeah, yeah. You yeah you're not the first person to say that to me. I'll tell you what, smiling, though. Some of the viewers, I'll read you some of the comments because I know you love when people have had a few quid on. Followed you in, Steve. Um, so we've got Giles Moore, Gore Mavis lad. Nice work, Steve. Andy Turner says, well done, Steve. Comfortable winner. 
Uh, Frankie Burton says, nice work, Steve. Uh, nice when one that you big up comes in a class player, DT. All the best. Palmer is a win machine as well. Nice. So we're back among the winners. The viewers are happy. I know you would have copped a few quid as well, Steve, because you like to get involved. So everyone's a winner. Everyone's happy. I do like to get involved, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Frankie Burton. He's an old classic. Giles, Giles is a good lad. Um, yeah, yeah. D delighted with those comments. Thanks, guys. All good stuff. What about the, the the lads in behind the winner as well, Stephen? I know you was keen to, to mention some of the uh, the youngsters on show here. Well, absolutely. I mean, it, it, Luke Clanton and Michael Thor Bjornsson, we'll be discussing them a lot in the in the preview to come. They tied for second place. Two rising stars of the game. You know, Clanton's still an amateur. Thor Bjornsson has only just turned pro. You know, stateside college golf so strong these days. Yeah, they, they come onto the tour. They're ready to, to contend and, 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 and win immediately you saw what nick dunlap did in the american express at the start of the year dave you know he, he won the amex as an amateur um so yeah the quality of stateside college golf has, has never been greater and as i say we could, we'll be discussing clanton and co later he is favorite he is favorite for this week's pj tour event when he's still an amateur and that i think that shows every year there's like a wave of these players coming through and you you know some of them are ready to to compete at least and some of them will be overlooked by the bookmakers and be available at big prices. So even, you know, when you're 200s, 150s, the, the each way play on some of these every year, you know, there's there's money yeah. to be had just on the place money. Absolutely. You remember when Colin Morikawa and Matt Wolf first came onto the scene, they were going off at massive prices when they first come out came out of amazing college careers. Um, you know, Ludwig Ober, you know, we were back in Ludwig Ober, 80 to 1 when he first came out um so um yeah 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 keep an eye on college golf because the quality is, is has never been better okay right should we get stuck into this week's action then because there's loads to get through and we will start with the return of rory in the scottish open um uh, we go off to the renaissance club um he's the defending champion as well and is our market and we'll get into the market for after we've spoke about the, the course itself steve what are we expecting yeah, the Renaissance Club, North Berwick, East Lothian, Scotland, 7,237 yards, par 73, par fives, five par threes. It opened in 2008, so we've got a modern links here. It's made its uh, Scottish Open debut in 2019, been hosting every year since. Not a pure links, it's got some trees on the course. Heavily contoured greens are the main defence. We've had some rain in the build-up, more rain coming. The course is playing soft and easy, cloudy, cool, relatively calm conditions for the tournament. So plenty of birdies this week, a field of one, five, six going to post. And when I hear rain and soft, I'm, I would just automatically reach for distance. Is that the right thing to do here, Steve? Yeah, I think a powerful player with a tidy short game is going to succeed this week. Right, let's have a look at the market then. Now, AK bets at the time of recording this, our joint top price, Rory, at eight to one. Then we've got Ludwig Ober at 16. So we've got Zardar Chauvelin at 9. Morikal 14. Ober 16. Fleetwood 20. Who's been backed a little bit of money around for Fleetwood this week. Hovland 22s. Kim at a pony 25. A star-studded lineup in the Scottish Open, Steve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. How many in the team for this one? We have only got two selections for this. Yes, the week before the Open Championship. I don't want to put too much pressure on punters. We're going with, we've got four tournaments. We're going with a two, 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 two formation, eight selections, okay? And uh, lots of multiple opportunities. Right, there's a bit of Mike Bassett in you there. Right, um, okay. <laughs> right. What's the main tip then for the Scottish Open? The main tip is Ryan Fox, 70 to 1 with AK bets last time I checked who we resisted at short prices for the BMW International last week, but we can't resist at big prices for the Scottish Open. Fox loves Lynx golf. He won the Dunhill Lynx at St Andrews in 2022. He was runner-up in the 2018 Irish Open on a Lynx track. He was fourth in the 2017 Irish Open at a Lynx course. He's got loads of good form in this tournament, the Scottish Open. He was second on his Dunhill Lynx title defence last year, and he was 12th at the Renaissance Club 12 months ago. So proving that he can play this this particular Lynx track. And I think that pre-tournament rain that I mentioned has made the course even more appealing for Fox this time. You know, effortlessly powerful, built like a blooming gorilla, isn't he? Um, I think he's got the tools to overwhelm the Renaissance this week. And he's thrilled to be back playing in Europe, Dave. I saw some quotes. I mean, he's 
He's admitted that the, the lifestyle on the PGA Tour is difficult for him. You know, they all keep themselves to themselves over there. You know, this is a very sociable character. He loves the the banter of, and the crack found on the DP World Tour. And, you, you know, he's really happy last week in Germany being back amongst his, his pals. Uh, and a happy fox plays better than a sad fox, Dave. He played well last week, carded four solid rounds for 17th place in the BMW International. So, yeah, this is a four-time DP World Tour champion going off going off at a massive price. And he proved he can beat an elite field last last year. BMW PJ at Wentworth. You must remember that one. You know, came roaring through at the end. Uh, so he's won a Rolex Series event at Wentworth last year. He can win another Rolex Series event on Sunday, I'm sure. Happy Fox is better than a sad Fox. Love it. Right, that is the main selection then for the, the Scottish Open. Now, I'm surprised you've only gone with two players. So who's the next best? The next best is Tom McKibben. Uh, we stopped back in Ewan Ferguson, but we certainly haven't stopped back in Tom McKibben. He's 80 to 1 with AK Bets, a Lynx natural. You know, he's grown up competing on Lynx courses in Ireland. He finished 35th on his Scottish Open debut last year, a much more polished performer 12 months later, a 21 year old with the world at his feet. He's already won once on the DP World Tour. Victory number two can't be far away. We thought it was going to come in the Italian Open last time out. It looked like that clubhouse lead was going to hold for him. Then Marcel CM birdied the 72nd hole, birdied the first playoff hole and, and, and broke Tom's heart, broke my heart, probably broke your heart, Dave. Um, but that, um, that Italian Open just further proof for me of how good he is. He's had six top tens this year. He's played badly only once when he had tonsillitis in Singapore. So he's, he's gone to post lame and, and not perform. But every other performance has been rock solid, just consistently impressive. I think he'd be on the leaderboard again this week. And no mental scarring from that. You're not concerned. That was heartbreak. It was heartbreak, wasn't it? That 18th, that part from CM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think he'll have mental scarring because he obviously when he posted that score, he didn't feel it, it, it was a, a competitive total. And then the, Caddy was, was on his way home. Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah his, Caddy's at the train station tucking into his, uh, his, uh, his meal deal. Um, and um, yeah, then he was rushed back. So yeah, I, I don't think there was mental scar, and he was all smiles afterwards. It, 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 but um, yeah, yeah, I, I just think I got two lovely outsiders here uh, in, a, in a tournament where the elite may be a little bit lacking in full focus. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss the favourites now. If, if yeah, which will of course. Uh, time of recording. Joint top price at eighty to one is uh, the Kibin. So good stuff. Right, as you've rightly said, McElroy eight to one. Um, Steve, talk to me. Surely not. And who can be back in McElroy eight to one here? I can resist those odds, yeah, because he you know, he left the US Open a broken man. Yeah, he was too cut shattered. up to face shattered. Yeah, he couldn't even face the media. I mean, it's quite a controversial decision not to face the media because yeah, they they, they do have obligations to do that. And um, yeah. yeah, many a player has blown a tournament and then bravely come out. So he got a little bit of stick for 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 just you know rushing off. Um, and then obviously withdrew from the Travellers Championship, didn't play in the signature event the following week. So, he's, he, yeah, the media men are going to have lots of questions to ask about the US Open this week. So an uncomfortable media conference is, is impending for McElroy. Um, you know, can he get into a relaxed state of mind and, 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 and be competitive this week? Um, having spent the best part of a month lying in a darkened room, he, he admitted that he was going to go off and get away from golf, put the clubs away just work on the, the mental recovery. He's obviously had a, a, a turbulent time off the course with his, his family situation as well. So he's had a lot on his plate. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to find out if he can bounce back without a financial investment at a short price. And, you know, just one final point on McElroy is, is, is important to remember. When the Renaissance Club first came onto the schedule, McElroy, very critical of it, said it was too easy, said it was poor, open preparation. Obviously, all, all those comments have been forgotten now. He, he won the tournament last year, um, but I haven't forgotten him. I don't think he's a, he's a huge fan of the, of the track. Interesting. I will say this, though, that if anyone has got that mental fortitude, given the fact that this isn't a major, he's chose to come back for this and not next week. Yeah. It could be him, but like you, eight to one, I don't want to play to find out. That's it, yeah, it's a gentle loosener. It's a gentle loosener and, um, you yeah, know, he, he might be able to relax and enjoy it. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, he's not familiar with that price. It's just no, there's no point getting involved with that price, I don't think. Uh, and, and I much prefer, did you say they're eight to one co-favourites with? Yeah. With AK? But, yeah, I much prefer Xander Shafele, much more tempting. You yeah, know, obviously. Nines, Shafele's nines with AK. Nine to one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would make Shafele favourite because, you yeah, know, mentally in a much better place. 
you know, just won his first major in May. Uh, his game's never been in better shape. You know, the, the swing changes have come good. He's added so much yardage, you know, just a complete player now. And he won at the Renaissance two years ago. So he's a course winner. So, um, yeah, if you're full of state money, as I say, I don't want to put pressure on punters the week before the Open. Uh, if you're full of state money and you want three three selections, I would say Shafale, um, because um, it, yeah, it's, it's hard to pick holes in, in his case. Right, a couple of others then. I mentioned there's a bit of money around for Tommy Fleetwood. What are your thoughts on him? Fleetwood, yeah, loves Lynx golf. Been playing well this year. You can't rule him out. But um, yeah, not not much, not hardly any wind in the forecast. I prefer back in Fleetwood when it's a proper pure Lynx test. As I say, this is a semi-Lynx and there's no wind in the forecast. You're going to need to putt well for four days. Doesn't really lend itself to Fleetwood. And the other one I wanted to ask you about was the Hov. The Hov, blimey, what an enigma he's been this year. Um, you know, back with his old coach, you know, he's had further time to to get back to his old swing. Um, but again, you know, you know if, 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 if it's going to be easy this week and, um, you know, you've got to hold all your putts. So again, that's, that doesn't lend you to, to Hovland, does it? OK, right. Good stuff. Let's move on. Next, we've got four tournaments to get stuck into. The ISCO Championship is next, uh, formerly known as the... The barber song. Now, how do they this this scoring points and and all sorts? Of this one, Steve. That's still the format. No, you're getting your barber saws muddled up with your barracudas. Right, that's all right. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, right, let's have a look at the the field for this one because um, let's have a look. Just quickly bring this up on AK Bets website. Right, we are looking at the formerly mentioned Luke Clanton. Is the 12 to 1 favourite, Thiel Bjornsson at 18s, Cham Kim at 30s, Carson Young at 33s. Um, some unknown names to the casual golf punter to the fore here. Before we talk about the market leaders, what can you tell us about the course? Yeah, the Champions Course, Keen Trace Golf Club, Nicholas Field, Kentucky. 7,328 yards, par 72, four par fives. Keen Trace has staged this event since 2018. As it's always been called the Barber Soul, now it's the ISCO. I haven't looked into what ISCO do, but uh, all credit to them for, for, for joining the PGA Tour. We've got wide fairways, large greens. It's a doddle for professional golfers. Winning scores of 21 under par or better in every edition. Sunny, warm, calm weather throughout. So a field of 156 enjoying a birdie fest. And how many? We've got two here. You've mentioned two in each two, tournament. Two, two. Of course. What and the main tip is... It's a shame there's not five tournaments. Then we could have two, 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 and have an actual football formation. The number one selection, Michael Thor Bjornsson, 18 to 1 with AK bets. He should be favourite in my eyes. We'll come on to the actual favourite later. Thor Bjornsson has been destined for greatness for a while. It's been no secret how good he is. He won the US Junior Amateur in 2018. He made the cut in the 2019 US Open. He's been a star at Stanford University. You know, we know some colossal talents have come out of Stanford. Tiger Woods, of course, made his name at Stanford. He finished top of the PJ Tour University rankings. So he, he's got a PJ Tour card, as, as Michael Thor Bjornsson, um, for the remainder of this season and the whole of next season. Uh, like Ludwig Bear, Ludwig Bear got onto the PJ Tour through that route. Now we've got Michael Thor Bjornsson as the second player through those university rankings. So he turned pro last month. You know, eager to get the financial rewards of this this tour card. It's only a matter of time before Thor Bjornsson makes a breakthrough in this lowly grade. It's a massive opportunity. This is a 22-year-old going places. He finished 11th in the Dubai Desert Classic earlier this year, DP World Tour Rolex Series event, 39th in the Travelers Championship um, uh, last month, um, a PJ Tour signature event. You know, he's, he's been doing well in, in, in high class company. Uh, missed the cut by a shot in the Rocket Mortgage. Bounced back last week with second place behind Davis Thompson in the John Deere Classic. Uh, he closed with a 63. I think he's going to destroy Keen Trace. Really excited about Thor Bjornsson. And as, as you've mentioned there, Steve, you know, the big guns have, have headed over to the Scottish Open and he's been going well in fields better than this. Yes. And this is a pitiful field, in all honesty. I don't like. <laughs> I don't, I don't, well, I, I, they, obviously, it's uh, 
co-sanctions. You've got the Scottish Open co-sanction. You've got this co-sanction. You've got lots of DP World Tour. Half the field's made up of DP World Tour players that can't believe their luck that they're in a PGA Tour event. I don't want to disrespect the DP World Tour, um, but there's, there's 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 a lot of chaff in this field. Um, and, um, yeah, I think Michael Thor Bjornsson, you know, we, 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 it's, it's one of those situations like with, with Ludwig Albert where you sit your grandchildren on your on your knee in, in, in a few decades to come, God willing, and uh, you, yeah, you tell them about the time you backed Ludwig Albert at 80 to 1 for this a nearly you know, rubbish golf tournament. Um, yeah, we'll be able to we'll be able to sit our grandchildren on here and talk about the time you backed Michael Thor Bjornsson at 18 to 1 for you know, the uh, the Barbasol. Lovely. Right. So we, we're cutting away the chaff. We're looking for the wheat. Who's the second player? <laughs> Yes, I got a lovely strand of wheat for you here, and it is Pearson Coody. Pearson Coody, sixty-six to one with AK bets last time I checked. Another rising star of the sport, astonishingly low in the betting for me, given how much chaff is in this field. Yeah, Pearson Coody is a class act competing amongst a rabble. Uh, we had a former world number one amateur win last week. Yeah, you know, I, I get a lot of stick for my love for former world number one amateurs. Davis Thompson was a former world number one amateur. Pearson Coody, former world number one amateur. He's already won three times on the Corn Ferry Tour. That's a great achievement for a 24-year-old. The Corn Ferry Tour is fantastic quality these days. At 24, three wins on that and now chasing a PGA Tour breakthrough. He clearly settled on the PGA Tour now. 18th in the Corrales Ponte Cana, 5th in the Charles Schwab Challenge, 30th last week in the John Deere. Really encouraging warm-up. He closed, Dave, with a bogey-free 64 on Sunday. One of his drives last week went 379 yards. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's got the lot, this fella. His putter was purring as well last week. Um, Cootie's ready, ready for takeoff. Yeah, what, we could better get the watch your bets warning in again, Dave. You know, he's got a yes. twin brother called Parker. Parker Cootie is playing in this as well. I think Pearson's better than Parker. I think he'll make most impact. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. Very exciting golf tournament, this. Yeah, if they're ever going off the same price, maybe some shady characters in betting shops out there will be... Uh... Trying it on, no doubt, no yeah, doubt. So watch yeah. your bets there. So, I mean, we'll talk about some of the others at the, the head of the market there then, Steve. Um, yes. We mentioned um, that, Clans yeah, Clanton was who showed up ever so well last week and now he's favourite. Yeah, favourite for a PGA Tour event as an amateur. It, yeah, these are remarkable times. Um, 12 to 1 with AK bets, I believe. Yeah, the, it's the wrong favourite for me because... He's only just come onto the scene. He, he's two years younger than Thor Bjornsson. This week will be uh, Clanton's fourth start in a professional event. Yeah, he's obviously playing well, but Thor Bjornsson has been active in professional golf events for much longer. We saw Thor Bjornsson playing in the 2019 US Open, made the cut there. He finished fourth in the Travelers Championship in 2022 as an amateur. He was 20th in the Dubai Desert Classic last year and then 11th in it this year. So he's been doing it and proving his class for a long time, whereas, um, you know, Clanton is suddenly flavour of the month. A couple of eye-catching recent efforts. But, yeah, a bit of recency bias for me. I um, thought Bjornsson is, is more proven for my money and, 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 and looks the better player. Right, I'll throw some other names at you very quickly, then maybe a line on each one. Uh, Chan Kim, Carson Young and Daniel Berger. Chan Kim, I mean, if you, if you if you like your world rankings, you'd be you'd be leaning towards Chan Kim. I think he may be the highest ranked player in the field. I, I'd have to check that. Um, but he, yeah, he's, 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 he won twice on the Corn Ferry Tour last year um, and played okay last week. So yeah, I respect Chan Kim. Just prefer the others. Sorry, who, who were the other fellas you said? Oh, you've done me there, Steve. So I've moved That's all right. No, no, I'm, I'm keen. Carson to... Young and Daniel Berger. Carson Young, yeah, played all right last week. Daniel Berger, did you say? Yeah, coming back from injury, doing okay. Uh, but yeah, I, they they can't they can't um, touch Michael Thorbjornsson this week. So um, yeah, now very happy with a two pronged attack. I know it's bold going with this formation, and uh, as you say, Mike Bassett um, would uh, get a lot of stick for it. But uh, I like it. I like the plan. I sit right on the back of the back of a fag packet as well. Right, we're going to move on to the Live Golf event, Rob, to the Andalusia Invitational here. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to flag up the prices first because. AK bets are top price. I counted the front 11 in the market here. Um, so we've got Bryson DeChambeau at seven, John Ram at seven, Till Hatton at 11, Neiman 12, Sergio Garcia 16, Brooks Kepka 20, Cameron Smith 22. The front 11 are top price. We've got a decent fielder as expected. Steve, tell us about the track. 
well, one of the most famous courses in the world, Real Club Valderrama, Sota Grande, Spain, 7,010 yards, par 71, three par fives. Valderrama has hosted numerous DP World Tour events. I'll get through them now because, yeah, it helps punters who like to do their own research. The Volvo Masters from 1988 to 1996 and from 2002 to 2008. The Ryder Cup in 1997. The Amex Championship in 1999 and 2000. The Andalusia Masters in 2010, 2011, from 2017 to 2022. The 2016 Spanish Open. And finally, the Andalusia Masters last year, the inaugural Andalusia Masters. It's one of the tightest tracks in Europe. Thin tree-lined fairways flanked by heavy rough, small undulating greens. We've got some wind in the forecast as well this week, Dave. It'll be windy for round one. Drops off a little bit on Saturday, calm on Sunday. Field of 54, no cut. Starts 12.15pm UK time Friday. We've got any winners in the field? Course winners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a few. We've got a few. Uh, Ian Poulter's one of them. I mean, did you see him play, playing with the England squad on the, on the, on the range the, uh, yesterday or the day before? Yeah, I saw uh, some of that. Yeah, some rather questionable swings in there, but I did say that. Yeah, yeah. Ian Poulter and Sam Horsfield were, were taken to uh, the England camp to sort of train him on some some golf, and uh, Poulter gave Saka a, a two minute lesson. I think it was a, a ten second lesson. Saka at a great shot. So Saka Saka's still buzzing. Um, yeah, yeah. Check out the video. Very interesting. And what a place, by the way. As well, I've been to Round of Arm. Never played, but I've been there. Just iconic. Yeah, I've been there to watch and I had the chance to play there uh, on a golf holiday the other day and I came back for a James concert and then James messed up their, messed up their gig with a... Yeah, yeah, it's a long story. I've, I've discussed it before. But yeah, I'll play there. I'll, I'll play there one day, I'm sure. Right. OK, right. It is seven the field. Uh, and you've got two for us, Steve. Steve, who's the main selection? The main selection is Sergio Garcia. Uh, 16 to one with AK bets. That is top price. It's a fantastic price. The King of Valderrama. This is Sergio Garcia's domain. He first teed up at Valderrama when he was 13 years of age. Then he became a regular contender at the course on the European Tour. He's won three DP World Tour events at Valderrama. And two of those victories were, were not long ago. We're not talking about the distant past here. The 2017 and 2018 Andalusia Masters were won by Garcia. He describes Valderrama as his favourite course in the world. Makes no bones about it. His trademark precision fully rewarded here. This is an incredible stat, Dave. I'm going to I'm going to get that jaw of yours dropping. He can boast 15 top tens from 16 Valderrama starts as a wow. pro. <laughs> so I mean that that's got you in it. As yeah. well as winning three times, he's finished second three times. He's the man to beat whenever he tees up at Valderrama, and he's still got plenty to offer. And this time, fired up, fired up. Angry Garcia. Did you see the open qualifier last week? Yes, he, I did. He was not a happy bunny. Not a happy bunny. West Lancashire Golf Club. He's got 2,000 people have turned up to follow him. There's no ropes. It's, 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 it's mental at, it's, at West Lancashire. So the, the play's a bit slow. And um, his, his group gets put on the clock. Um, and, you know, he, he's really angry about being put on the clock because they're just waiting for, for fans to move out of the way. Um, and um, he ended up finishing two shots shy of qualification. So he's not in the open, fully fo focused on Live Golf Valderrama. Plenty of players playing this week who've got more than one eye on on an entirely different test next week at Royal Troon. Um, yeah, that their focus will be lacking. He'll be putting everything into this week, Garcia. Um, and, and, and don't forget, still waiting for his Live Golf breakthrough. That's what I was going to say. I don't think he's won on Live yet. And if he is no. going to, surely it's going to be this week. Yeah, absolutely. Highly motivated Garcia. Uh, he's finished. He's, he's he's lost a playoff three times on the lift circuit. He's been he's been unfortunate. Um, so uh, yeah, huge opportunity for a breakthrough with the yeah the people ahead of him in the bet and perhaps minds elsewhere. Right, I'm all over that. Six days. That is the one this week, definitely. Um, who else you got for this one, Steve? Uh, the next best is Martin Kamer. Martin Kamer. Martin Kamer. Eighty to one with AK bets who is fully fit again and showing glimpses of the game, which made him world number one and a two-time major champion. You forget how good Martin Keimer was. He's, he's made the cut in the last two majors. He's posted top 20 finishes at Live Adelaide, Live Singapore, Live Houston. He was 32nd last week in, in the BMW International. You know, 32nd of 156, another solid effort. There's a Keimer resurgence happening. 
and Valderrama is the ideal place for this to, to gather pace. He relishes this, this course. Kaima finished sixth on his Valderrama debut in the 2007 Volvo Masters. He was second in the 2008 Volvo Masters. He was sixth in the 2016 Spanish Open at Valderrama. He was second in the 2020 Andalusia Masters at Valderrama. He knows how to play Valderrama. You know, wonderful each way bet this week. So, yeah, exciting times. I can tell you're excited as well. And you're very much leaning towards course form this week, Steve, this one. Yeah, yeah, I am excited. Yeah, yeah, Valderrama is a, is a unique test. Uh, and uh, as you say, Garcia's eyes are going to light up, and, and, and as, as will Martin's. Yes, Martin. What about John Rahm's eyes? Will they be lighting up, or will they John the red Rahm's... mist descend? John Rahm's eyes, do they ever light up? I mean, um, yeah, we talk about, who was saying it's difficult to get a smile out of it? It was you and someone else, wasn't it? Um, yeah, John Rahm, John Rahm never smiles. I mean, he's a, he's a live golf maiden. Uh, he's a drone hater. I mean, if you oppose, <laughs> I know some guys like to get drones at the racetrack, don't they? Get uh, better yeah. pictures. If you've opposed John Rahm this week, just get a drone hovering within 10 miles of Valderrama and he'll lose his head. He, he, he hates the drones. Um, so um, I think his head will come off. You know, it, it, and his Valderrama record on the DP World Tour is you know, poor for a player of his stature. Miscut, two, miscut. So he's miscut, missed the cut in two of his three starts in lowly grade and the Thea Masters. Um, yeah, I think he's an awful cross. I'd just like to flag here on the sweet spot. We do not endorse any kind of outside interference in any of the the golf tournaments. In case anyone seen with a drone anywhere near this event is, is purely down to. to <laughs> well, Steve. What about Bryson? What about UK, Bryson, Steve? Our UK viewers might struggle to get a drone from here to, to Valderrama. <laughs> We're far reaching. I'll assure you, we are far reaching. <laughs> right. What about Bryson? Bryson, again, I think a poor price. This is not a DeChambeau course. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, we have learned our lesson from Pinehurst. You can't rule him out anywhere. I mean, Pinehurst wasn't an ideal course. Valderrama's not an ideal course. He finished second at Live Golf and the last year. He's so talented, he can win anywhere. He can win at Valderrama. But, I think, yeah, no excitement in the prices. I think there's a lot of favourites this week where you just look at the, the odds and um, look away. Right, two more I want to ask you about for this one, then we'll move on. Recent winner, Tyrrell Hatton, and Neiman as well. Neiman must have been... Was Neiman close to being on the radar anywhere near... Yeah, the, Neiman, the Neiman was close to being on the radar, definitely, because yeah, the windy forecast, I like back in Neiman in the wind, but um, you know, less experience, yeah, vastly less experience of Valderrama than, than Garcia. I much prefer Garcia than Neiman. And, and Hatton, incredibly, hasn't competed at Valderrama. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Really? Hatton hasn't got any experience of, of the track. Um, so uh, that, that put me off him. Right, OK, there we go. Garcia, 16s. That won't last. That won't last. We'll see if AK bets will fold anywhere near the off. That's and a big price, also, that. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> that, that. That chat about the, uh, what was it, 15 out of 16 top 10 finishes. Was that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, as, as a pro, yeah. That is yeah. incredible. Absolutely incredible. Right. We will move on then to the fourth and final event to preview. Uh, women's golf, the Evian Championship, the Evian Resort Club here, Steve. And I'll give you a show. Uh, Athea Thitical at 12s. Nelly Korda at 12s. Lilia Vu at 16s. And Yamashita at 16s. Uh, apologies if I've butchered anyone's name there. The list goes on and the butchering would continue as well. Um, tell us about the track here, Steve. Yes, the Evian Resort Golf Club, Evian Le Bien, one of my favourite golfing locations. It's up there with Cran Uh We're at Evian Le Bien this week in France. Uh, 6, 000, it looks a lovely place. 6,523 yards, par 71. Evian Resort has staged this event since 1994, but it didn't become a major until 2013. Then it was staged in September, but we switched to July in 2019. Uh, so the form from 2019 onwards is the, the most relevant. We've got windless skies this week, um, sunny and warm on Thursday and Sunday, cooler and wetter Friday and Saturday. Uh, the winning score usually in the high teens, 1-3-2 going to post. Right, OK. And we already know that you're putting up two here. And who are they? Who's the main pick? Lynn Grant. Lynn, 30-1 to 1 with AK Betts who won the Scandinavian mixed title on the DP World Tour a month ago. You must remember that one. This is a 25-year-old at the peak of her powers. She's won six times on the Ladies' European Tour over the last 
28 months. She's won once on the LPGA Tour. She's becoming an increasing threat in the majors. And the Evian Championship, arguably her best chance of winning a major. This is her third appearance in it. She's got form figures of 8-16. She was ninth in the last major, the women's US PGA. Uh, I think she's she's good value to make an impact in the Evian. Okay, yeah, 30 to 1 there. She is a, a big price. Top price that as well. Short as 25s elsewhere, not AK bets. They are 30. So top price with AK bets there. Who else, Steve? And then the other one is Celine Boutier. 45 to 1 with AK bets. Miss Boutier. We'll all be releasing some celebratory Boutier on Sunday when Celine wins the Evian, Dave. Uh, I don't see why she's on offer at such a juicy price. She didn't just win it last year. She she won it. She won this last year by six shots, Dave. Six shots. A six shot six shot romp. She's from this part of the world. Um, I see no reason why she won't put on another show for for family and friends this week. She nearly won the HSBC World Championship in February. Finished second in that. Uh, so she's been threatening a win this year. She's posted a, a top twenty finish in her last two starts. One of them was the, the women's PGA. So um, yeah, I think there's a uh, Potentially some uh, some booty a booty to be plundered this week. Right. OK, good stuff. Let's leave that there, shall we? Uh, what about some of the market principles? You got any thoughts on them, Steve? Well, very interesting. Nelly Corder, Nelly Corder, you know, you, your automatic favourite for these for these these majors, uh, has arrived under a very unusual injury cloud this week, Dave. She she got bitten by a dog. I know you're a huge dog lover, but um, you know, occasionally. Yeah, some dogs, um, you know, you know, get a little bit overzealous. And uh, apparently, she um, she was coming out of a coffee shop in Seattle, and uh, this dog went at her, um, and and you know, sunk her gnashes into her. But I don't know where the gnashes were sunk into. I don't actually know where the injury is. They haven't released that. But she's got a she's got a media conference at the Evian Resort tomorrow. So then we'll find out where the dog bite was. But she was due to play last week. This is probably quite a significant injury because. She was due to play last week at uh, the Centurion Club in the event there and, and withdrew before it because of the dog bite. Um, so, yeah, you, you can't really play because, yeah, you don't know where the where the bite was. You know, if it was on her hand, um, you know, big issue, or if it was on her calf and she can't walk properly, I don't know. But as I say, we've got a, we got a media conference tomorrow. Tune in. Interesting. And did she, she blew up in the, the last major, didn't she? I remember her taking yeah. an eight. Yeah, dog. Yeah, even if she wasn't bitten by a dog, you'd be, um, you know, you, you might not get get involved because, um, you know, a lot of um, a lot of flops. You know, an amazing winning streak. Do you remember? It was it was all about Scheffler, Corder, win doubles. Scheffler has maintained that form. Corder has, has dropped away. All right, so we're taking on the market lead up there. Right, give us a round up then, Steve. Four events, two in each, two by two by two, sixteen lines. If you want to get involved in each way, four folds and bring the absolute house down. Um, but give us a, an overview then of each event. Let's bring the house down. Yes. Do you want to say the name of the tournament? I'll say the players. We I'll can do. It. Yeah. Not right. Do we are going to start then with the Scottish Open. Rory's return, but no love for Rory here. Who are you going for? Ryan Fox, Tom McKibben. Isco Championship. Michael Thorbjornsson, Pearson Cody. The and Andalusia Invitational. Sergio Garcia. Martin Kamer, Kaimer, Kaimer. <laughs> and finally, the Evian Championship. Lynn Grant and Celine Boutier. Now, there, there's not been love for this question that I've been firing at you each, each week in the comments, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If you were <laughs> to just have one bet yeah. this week, because some people will watch and be like, Do you know what, I'm just going to have a small little each way play on the one that Steve fancies the strongest out of the lot, which is absolutely fine. You don't have to... You bet every single selection, bet accordingly, bet responsibly. Just the one play, who would it be? Absolutely. Just the one play would be Michael Thorbjornsson at 18 to 1. I, I, I struggle to see him failing to contend in, in, in what is a very weak tournament. So, uh, yeah, Michael Thorbjornsson's the best single and the best double would be a Thorbjornsson Garcia double. Um, you know, because there's lots of multiple opportunities. Um, but um, I think um, that is the best, um, the best uh, multiple. Right, and if I may, before we go, uh, recent news broke that Keegan Bradley has been announced as the US Ryder Cup captain. Now, I'm looking at the prices. Um, USA are 
favourites. What, what are your thoughts on, on Keegan Bradley? I mean, if, if his pre-shot routine's anything to go by, it's going to take him six months to select his team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I honestly thought it was a joke when it first came out. I just thought, I thought that's just a wind-up. Uh, but it is actually true. Um, you know, he has got connections with that area. You know, the, the, the Beth Page crowd is going to be going to be pumped to the nines. He's the sort of intense character that could get the best out of home advantage, perhaps. But yeah, Tiger Woods said he couldn't do the job um, because he's too focused on uh, his various other commitments, which is you know trying to unite the tours seems to be his main one. Um, so yeah, surprising selection. Um, but yeah, you know, maybe maybe a young captain is, is what that team needs. Because um, you get all these old old captains, and uh, you know is, is, this golf's becoming a young man's game. Yeah, your Clantons, your Thor Bjornsons. Maybe you need a young captain to to keep pace with it. So there are reasons where it, why it's a positive. But yeah, I was I, I'll be honest with you, I was staggered by the selection. Um, What's and, his um, Ryder Cup record like? And how many times has he played in the Ryder Cup? He's he's not played Ryder Cup for ages, is he? No. Um, Twenty fourteen, maybe his last one. Um, I, I can't remember his record. I, I don't think particularly good. And uh, obviously, you know, Netflix viewers will, will, will remember. You know, he, he's live on air getting the call about being ditched from the team. You know, Zach Johnson rang, rang him up to say he's not in the team. He was very close to getting a, a pick for the last Ryder Cup team. Yeah. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. And he was he was moaning about the old. Well, I don't know where he was moaning about it, but it was the point was made that it's a bit of an old boys network. You know, your Justin Thomases, your Jordan Spieths. You know, if you're not part of the in crowd you you weren't in the team so it's an yes it's a decision to sort of deflect all that um grief they were getting about that um the man who was rejected because he wasn't part of the in crowd is now in charge um so yeah yeah remarkable scenes dave we'll, we'll have yeah yeah we'll have what two years to discuss all this <laughs> yeah exactly I, just, I thought i'd bring it up just because it literally just been announced yeah now it's astonishing yeah, you there we go. Right. We will be back next week. Thanks, Steve, for his time and expertise as ever. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Get your comments in if you're following Steve's winners. Um, right. Next week, we will be back to preview the final major of the year, the 152nd Open Championship. We'll also have a watch along on the Sunday as well. So it'll be lots of fun along the way. There we have loads of guests as well. We get interactive with you for that. So we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to this weekend. We're looking forward to the Euros. I'll leave you with this, Steve. It's coming home, right? It's coming home. If Luke Shaw plays left wing back tomorrow, we can't lose against the Netherlands. Gamble responsibly, but 8-11 to 11 England to qualify looks good to me. Good stuff. I can't believe we're, we're resting on Luke Shaw's involvement, but there we are. Right, loads of golf to get stuck into. Do remember, as Steve said, to gamble responsibly. Enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>